Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Good morning to all joining us back flanked by our vice president of the Patriotic Front, Honorable Given Luwinda, and party officials. Honorable Given Luwinda has some message why we are here and the activities that both the vice president and the president will be engaged in. Um, Honorable Given Luwinda, I would like to welcome you and all the party officials. Mulishani, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, fellow countrymen and women who are following us on social media. Uh, yesterday, the sixth Republican president and president of the Patriotic Front, Dr. Edgar Chagualungu, gave us marching orders as members of the party that we ought to make sure that justice is done and that we have to make sure that uh, we mobilize the party we reorganize in readiness for 2026 so that we can redeem this country from the dungeons of dictatorship in following those marching orders i had to come here to the secretariat today to come and use this opportunity to inform all our party officials, all members of the Central Committee, all provincial committees across the country, all district committees, all constituency committees, all ward committees across the country. We have to implement the marching orders given by President Edgar Chagualungo. In so doing, let us defend democracy, but also let us defend the patriotic front from stooges of the UPND who want to cause destruction to the patriotic front. Today we should have gone into one constituency, but we decided that we postpone that activity because of one major reason, the national disaster that, has, that occurred in Chingola. A number of lives have been lost in Chingola and uh, we decided that uh, today we should not politic too much because we're still finding out the exact number of people who have lost their lives because of the recklessness of the government of the day which unfortunately is not safeguarding the lives of citizens. What is worrisome is that for such a disaster to occur and for it to be covered by international media such as BBC, Al Jazeera and so on and be downplayed by Zambians, especially by the leadership in Zambia, is totally diabolical. The last time we had such an accident in Zambia was in 1970. And 87 lives were lost in Mufulira. Those who are old enough to remember or remember that Dr. Kenneth Kaunda had to leave whatever he was doing. He went and camped on the Copper Belt for a week and went and visited the homes of every victim. And yet today, this is the third day going, we haven't heard about any political leadership that has been provided in Chingola. We have not heard about the acting president, Mrs. Nalumango. Where is she? She's acting president and here in Lusaka, instead of going to commiserate with the people in Chingola. President Hagainde is in Dubai, having meetings in Dubai, instead of coming back to Zambia to come and face the challenge that his people are facing. The lives that are lost in, Ching in Chingola are Zambian lives. And there is nothing more precious than one Zambian life. 
And when you lose so many people in one disaster, in one accident, what is expected of the president is to stop whatever he's doing in Dubai, to stop attending those meetings, to come back to Zambia, to be the chief mourner, because that is a national disaster. Had that happened during the reign of the Patriotic Front, I can assure you that would have declared that a national disaster and would have declared a week of national mourning, like KK did in 1970. I also want to seize this opportunity to just update you on uh, what uh, the spokesperson of police, Reha Monga, talked about. Reha Monga wants to create an impression that the accident that occurred in the early hours today between Rafael Nakachinda and the train was caused because of the carelessness of Rafael Nakachinda. First, I'd like to thank God for preserving the life of our Secretary General, yeah. Rafael mm. Nakachinda. Mm. Amen. 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 It is purely out of the love of God, the mercy of God, mm. that Rafael Nakachinda is still alive. Amen. Mm. Otherwise, had it been for the hand of God, the story would have been totally different. Mm. But I'd like to inform you that I've been in touch with Rafael Nakachinda. I spoke to him early in the morning today. And he assured me that he's totally out of danger. He sustained a few scars, like Ray Hamonga himself said. But the truth of the matter is that Rafael Nakachinda did not see the train because the train had no lights. The train was driving without lights. And at night, who can possibly see a moving locomotive if it doesn't have lights? Secondly, it is a mandatory procedure by any train driver that when they approach a road crossing, they must hoot to make sure that whoever is coming along the road must be made aware of the fact that there is an oncoming train. According to Rafael Nakachinda and the people who were there, the eyewitnesses, there was no sound of the hooter of the train. And that is what Nakachinda did not realize that there was a train. And that's how he went on the road crossing and was unfortunately hit by an oncoming train. So let Reha Monga please tell the Zambian people the truth. Rafael Nakachinda was not at fault. The statement that he has given to the police is that he did not see the train because it was devoid of lights. He did not have lights and the driver of the train did not sound the horn to warn drivers and pedestrians of the fact that there was an oncoming train. Finally, I want to reiterate what I said earlier to all members of the Patriotic Front. The marching orders were issued yesterday. There would not be any further marching orders. We are now going to just expect provincial officials in all our 10 provinces to ensure that districts and constituencies hit the ground running. Let us all be in boots now to hit the ground running, to defend our party and to defend Zambia's multi-party democracy. Thank you very much. Mr. President, we have a vote of thanks from a woman who is on the ground, councillor. Councillor, please come and uh, just join us. And, Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Introduce yourself. My name is Annie Blessing Chinyanka. I'm the area councillor for Matero Ward 28. Previously, Ward 28, now 32. I'm the only female leader in Matero since 2016. Uh, much has been said by our vice president. I'm equally here to urge my fellow youths and women indeed. I'm also the uh, women secretary here at the province, provincial executive of Lusaka province from the mighty Patriotic Front Party. As you have heard, our party is the only uh, biggest opposition party in, in this country. I'm urging my fellow youths and women to continue mobilizing. Our party leadership, the entire hierarchy of PF is intact. Our section is intact. Our party of officials, uh, district and provincial officials. Our doors are open to you. You can come through at any time. We are strong as ever. Continue to rebrand, to unite and to be with the people as we've always been. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, we'll see you. Thank you.
Yeah, we are here at the party secretariat as uh, stated by the vice president. The marching orders were given by the president yesterday. He said the fight will be legal. Ama lawyers wakulaya kumidimo shabo kukoti. Political, you are politicians, you have to do your part. Civil, we have to engage NGOs, we have to engage the church, we have to engage everyone else. So the party continues to mobilize to fight for democracy. We are fighting for democracy. To restore the rule of law. To ensure that there is strict adherence to the constitution. Because what has happened the last one month, we've seen an abrogation. It's just not the last one month. The last uh, two and a half years, an abrogation of the constitution, an abrogation of the rule of law. Illegalities. So muntu nga na iba TV Padata la abuesha tekuwe wa chini TV ya kwe So the thief who has stolen the TV Even if he's enjoying watching soccer match from Premier League That's not his TV He remains a thief He has stolen the TV The duty of the police The duty of the courts is to ensure that that TV is brought back to the rightful owner. So we last come on at you, Kabola Lo, you no Maleta Mirapona TV in our Premier League, Galeta Mirapo, Musaka Manate TV, Aqua, Nicabola, Evi Refi, Latuadiquata Bacapocola, Latuadiquate Chidi. That TV is supposed to be brought back to the owners. So you have marching orders, please work. And for the tragedy that has occurred in. Um, in Chingola at a dump site. Recently, I was uh, uh, checking, uh, 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 perusing details. It was given to a company called Sensele Mine. Sensele Mine is owned by a mine, former mine executive, and I think there have been concerns both from the mining inspector and from the Environmental uh, Council of Zambia, the Environmental Authority. Uh, this is a dump site, disused mine, closed by KCM. So someone was given a license to begin mining and they didn't adhere so far from what we're hearing to basic rules of mining and as the vice president said this is a huge tragedy we expect president Haka in the to abandon his trip we expect senior officials of government to be in Chingola to supervise the rescue mission because I want to restore Tavala Monica and Nom. Tavala Monica, they are all dead, they are all buried. We don't know the, the state of their lives. Are they alive? Are they dead? And the numbers are very big. We had 25 yesterday, now we are hearing 36. Others are saying 55. We don't even know the numbers. This is a tragedy that has occurred and requires immediate attention. And as you heard the Vice President, he said he wanted to be here, meet party officials and probably visit uh, 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 other party officials in Lusaka. But a decision has been made that we abandon the political uh, processes that we are to engage in today. I think to uh, give due respect to the lives that are threatened in Chingola and for us I think to ensure that we focus the nation on the lives that have been lost uh, 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 or feared lost in Chingola. So we want to acquire for all, all of you, especially our party members that are watching us across the country. Be steadfast. Even former politicians, we have to do our political job. We have to do your media work. That's what we yeah. <laughs> 
and thank you very much thank you very much mc mc mcc has just reminded me that i need to talk about the by-elections that occurred yesterday and indeed we need to give an official statement um we had three by-elections in inchelenge in wapula in, in sama district under chimbamilonga constituency and in mwandi western province we participated in the three by-elections uh, we scooped uh kabuta the one in um in Chelengi. Yeah. we nearly won the one in um Mwembeshi in sama district under chimbamilonga but you saw what happened there your dear brother Chpiri Choba, the chairperson of our, our party in Northern Province, really worked hard. He has exposed what they were doing. They were using government vehicles. First, I took people to go and register them at the ECZ in Kasama, where we were doing continuous voter registration. They renewed the number. They brought them. And in the morning yesterday, they were transporting them using police and government vehicles to polling station. In fact, Chpiri was so alert that he even uncovered a secret polling polling station you have seen the videos and he actually took videos to demonstrate that ECZ was colluding and collaborating with the UPND to steal Mwembeshi but our teams did very well under those difficult circumstances the UPND camped in Mwembeshi over 10 ministers over time have been to um, Mwembeshi in Sama district but we congratulate congratulate our councillor in uh, Kavuta who, who beat uh, the hell out of UPND and the resiliency that was demonstrated uh, in uh, in Sama district. I haven't received yet our report from Mwandi uh, but that's a strong uh, 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 strong word for our colleagues but we put up a fight and I'm yet to get our report. So congratulations to all the teams and MCCs that went yeah, and especially to the provincial teams. Right in Mansa and Luapula and then Kasama Northern Province that participated in these by-elections with limited resources and with harassment from uh, the ruling party. So we want to acquire a good day. God bless you. Stay resilient. Stay steadfast. Keep on fighting. President Deb Galungu says, let's fight for our party. Each party in Vasata wa pangile. Wa pangile chabantu. Te chamuntu mo chabantu. And we have to preserve it for our people. So God bless you. We will hear from you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.